try to stop me now We're back again today with the Saab 900 project again. Uh, as you saw in the last video, we finished up the exhaust. Um, I think it sounds great. I am going to add that other uh, little um, glass pack muffler up front just to kill a little bit of the resonance. Um, that's a later project for another time when it shows up. Uh, today I'm going to tackle a couple little items that I've been working on um, that I've, I've known have needed done for a while and I'm just going to finish those up um, and make sure it's good to go for the summer. The first one um, is there's a little coolant elbow right on the front of the engine. Um, I replaced it when I built the engine. I don't know what happened to it. It either got nicked or, or something happened to it, but it's, uh, it's seeping just a little bit of coolant. Um, very minimal, just a couple drops every now and then, but I'm going to go ahead and replace that hose so it doesn't burst. Uh, and also the alternator bearing uh, is pretty noisy. It's actually really annoying. Um, so what I'm going to do with that alternator is pull it out, inspect it, see if I can rebuild it. Um, if I can get parts, I'll just rebuild the alternator if it's not too hard. Um, or if it's not too expensive, I'll just buy one and replace it with a core charge. Send the old one back to get rebuilt. So we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm going to pull that alternator out and inspect it first of all. Uh, while we're at it, the AC compressor is still in the car. I believe it's still good. Um, but when I got this car, you might remember it had a little bit of front end damage. Uh, it actually burst the, uh, the condenser in the front of the car. So the AC hasn't worked, it hasn't been hooked up at all. Um, the compressor's there, there's no belt or anything on it, it's just mounted there, but it's in the way of the alternator. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just remove the AC compressor and store it. There's no sense in it being on the car, taking up you know, space, making weight, whatever, being in the way. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and store it somewhere safe, warm and dry, so maybe if I add AC to it later, I can still use it, we'll see. Compressor still spins free. I think it's still plenty fine. Um, we may use it in the future, but for now it's just in the way.
so here's where this whole project starts to go off track. Um, originally, I was just going to replace the alternator and or rebuild it. Anyway, I needed to get it out. So as you can see up by the firewall, there are a couple of heater hoses. They were in the way. No matter how hard I tried to finagle things, I could not get the alternator out with those hoses there. So I was going to go ahead and drain the coolant um, and just remove those hoses temporarily, uh, which wouldn't really be a big deal. Um, just, you know, a couple bucks in coolant to top it back off would be fine. Um, but what ended up happening is as I was uh, going down to the bottom corner of the radiator, um, there's a, a pet cock down there that you can loosen up. Um, I use a little length of hose to direct the flow into the drain pan, but you loosen the uh, the drain cock on the radiator and it should drain out right above that spot where um, where the metal and the plastic of the radiator meet. I realized it was actually seeping coolant out of that spot, um, and that's not good. This radiator is questionable age. Um, it is one that I had used um, that I put in this car when I first rebuilt it. But um, I, I didn't know the full condition of it. Uh, it. It worked for a couple years now, so I guess I can't complain too much. But it's time for a new radiator. So uh, now um, <laughs> now we're replacing the radiator instead of just uh, the alternator. We're doing it all. So here's where we, uh, we're off on a side quest, as you can see. And uh, we'll be pulling the radiator now.
Then what really made this fun project funner was this right here. As I was digging in, I realized that the radiator was seeping. Which, you know, I can't really complain. It's an old radiator. It wasn't a new one. I didn't replace it when I built the car. Um, but, you know, it would be cool if it lasted longer than this. So, whatever. I'll buy a new radiator, too. The fans are good. I'll switch those over. Um, originally, all I wanted to do was drain a little coolant out so I could move these hoses out of the way to get the alternator out. Because these are heater hoses. Um, they're kind of in the way, getting the alternator out of the hole. And it turned into a huge project. Now the radiator's out. The alternator's out. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a sob story. This is how it goes. Um, the exhaust sounds great, though. So here I hit a little bit of a snag. There's a four bolt flange, uh, as you can see in the middle of this alternator, that holds the front bearing into the case. Well, those are Phillips head screws like the rest of them, and one of those screw heads had stripped out. It was seized in there. I'm pretty good with Phillips head screws. I've got some pretty good screwdrivers. I, I've been around them a while. I, I can usually get those out. But in this case, uh, it was not going to budge. So I uh, ended up getting it rounded out a little bit. Um, had to resort to other measures. Got the trusty old drill. And I'm just going to go ahead and drill the head of that screw out. Um, and that's going to just remove the, uh, the part that's holding it in. You can go ahead and remove the rest of that screw with some vice grips once you get the case apart. Um, and then I'll just end up replacing it with another screw uh, later on. So uh, sometimes you got to do what you got to do and no harm, no foul.
So the front bearing there, that one wasn't too bad. Um, it's a little noisy, but it's not too bad. This one here, yeah, it's rough. I mean, it's hard to even turn it without squeezing it really tight. So I uh, found both of these on Amazon for about 25 bucks for the pair of them. I'm going to go ahead and order those and get them coming. So one of the other things I'm going to have to fix is this little uh, elbow down here on the front of the head. I'm not sure what happened with it, but uh, it's got a little pinhole in it somewhere. And I noticed it right before I uh, started on the exhaust. So uh, since the radiator had to come out uh, and the entire cooling system's getting a once over anyway, I'm going to go ahead and replace this hose also. Okay, so this hose, it was replaced about two years ago, um, and it's really kind of gotten hard in that time. Um, I was pretty sure it was from Pro Parts Sweden, if I have to, had to guess. But as you can see, I think what really caused the issue, this nick right here, right there, I'm pretty sure that got dug into by the hose clamp when it was tightened down. And over time, it just weakened it in that spot. And it was definitely seeping a little bit out of that hole. So, okay, here's the new hose. I honestly couldn't tell you what brand it is. Um, yeah, looks right. So I'm going to go ahead and reuse these, uh, these OEM SOP clamps. They're in good shape. Uh, I'm just going to be more careful, I think, tightening them down. And hopefully I won't mess the hose up.
Okay, so what I have for the alternator, as I've cleaned up the case pieces um, very carefully with this one, obviously, because there's uh, quite a bit of electronics in it, um, but I was able to wipe it down, clean out a bunch of dust and gunk and whatever. Um, this actually went through the dishwasher, as did the pulley and some other stuff. Um, this piece, um, it's got these contacts on it. They have a little bit of a groove in them. Uh, it's pretty normal, really, because they do ride on this uh, this voltage regulator here. Basically, these two pins right on top, or those those uh, brushes, they call them, ride right on that as it spins. They contact it. That's what makes your power. So uh, I've actually checked these out. They're they're not worn very much. They have a little bit of a wear to them. Um, I just kind of cleaned them up a little bit with a scotch bright, kind of just touched them up. Uh, same with these, just some real, real fine, um, you know, real, real fine sandpaper. I think it was like 800 or something or 1,000. Uh, just kind of clean them up a little bit. Um, and as you can see, I pressed the bearings off of this shaft. Now what I need to do, first thing, is so there's this is the the big bearing that's in the front right here um, this one was probably okay um, but just because I'm in here I'm gonna do it this back one here however I don't know if you can see or not it's really hard to turn it it's actually you can feel it binding in the middle so that one was definitely the growler uh, I'm going to go ahead and press the new bearings, which I've got from Koyo, um, onto this. So the deal is um, with the new bearings, what I, I was able to look real close at the old ones, and there's some numbers on them. Um, probably can't catch them on camera or, or uh, you know, really pick them out, but they do cross the numbers that are on the new bearings. Where are they at? That one. These are the numbers that are on these bearings, if I can zoom in real close. So, uh, matched them up. I verified with a micrometer they're the right size. So, let's get them put on.
During the first starting attempt, uh, coolant hadn't quite gotten to the temperature sensors yet, so it wasn't wanting to start. Uh, ended up sitting on the starter a little bit too long, and an old ground wire uh, was kind of corroded, building up some resistance, finally uh, let some of the magic smoke out. So uh, I replaced that with a heavy-duty ground wire, and uh, we were good to go after that. Thank <laughs> you. 